Brooks here with the results of what happened at Fastlane. And it started off with the match between Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso against Finn Balor and Damian Priest for the Undisputed Tag Team Championship. And <clears throat> during this match, they had the usual kind of things you would expect. Back and forth tag action. Judgment Day interference. J.D. McDonough trying to get involved. Uh, but it didn't really work out well. Because sometime near the end of the match, uh, I think Priest had uh, Cody in position to place him through the announce table. And McDonough had the briefcase and was going to hit Cody with it, but accidentally hit Priest in the leg instead. So that's going to lead to a uh, gaming getting mad at JD and having more fallout there. But as you expect, Rhea Ripley and Dominic tried to get involved. Ripley tried to pretty much get in the mind of Jey Uso by distracting him and whatnot, but that didn't work out. And uh, the ending was quite surprising actually. Uh, Priest was distracted I think, I can't remember who it was Finn, it might have been Finn, I don't remember. Uh, but Jey Uso had uh, either Balor or Priest, I can't remember which. Uh, up for like that kind of like flapjack style move like he used to do with Jimmy with the 1D and Cody went off the ropes with the Cody cutter and surprisingly they got the one, two, one, two, three. Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso as of right now are the current undisputed tag team champions that was something I did not expect so yeah that's how that one went. And then it was the LWL with their mystery partner against uh, Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, Montez Ford and uh, Angelo Dawkins. The match started with uh, just Mysterio and Escobar against the three Lashley, Montez, and Dawkins. And it wasn't until later in the match that the tag partner was revealed to be Carlito, who, as you may remember, was one of my uh, predicted uh, mystery opponent, mystery partners, I mean, for Mysterio and Santos. I was almost expecting it to be Dragon Lee, considering they've been having him featured a lot. But Carlito was a cool addition as well. Uh... I think there was like a moment where Lashley might choke slam Gray on the ring apron at one point. Um, all kinds of high flying action as you expect. Um, and no sooner after Carlito got into the match, pretty much Ray, I believe, got the pinfall. Or maybe it was Santos or Carlito, I can't remember. Either way, the LWO got the win. Then it was uh, Io Sky defending her women's championship against uh, Charlotte and Asuka. And Asuka wasted no time at all to get the mist sprayed. Sprayed Charlotte, took her out of the match for the time being. So for a while it was just like as if Asuka and yeah, we're having a one-on-one -on -one match, but of course Charlotte got back involved. Uh, a lot of craziness ensued from there. Moon salts and such. And Bailey near the end of the match got involved as well. Caused a little bit of argument between her and Eo, because Eo did not want Bailey out there to help her. Because 
during the kickoff, she was saying she was going to try to do it by herself. And it's probably a good thing that Bailey did come out when she did, because um, otherwise we'd have to be dealing with Charlotte Flair champion again. And I'll explain to you why that would be the case. Because as Bailey was distracting the ref, uh, Oscar was locked in Charlotte's figure eight and uh, tapped out. So, technically, Charlotte would have won. But, because the referee was distracted, it doesn't count. And, EO Sky hit a moonsault or elbow drop. I can't really see what happened. Uh, and she retained that's going to lead to Charlotte complaining either on Raw or SmackDown. And then uh, we got Pat McAfee coming out to announce John Cena and uh, join the commentary team along with uh, Michael Cole and Corey Graves much to Corey's dismay and pretty much everyone else's enjoyment. And John Cena and L.A. Knight uh, went into battle against the Us yeah, not the Usos, uh, Solo Sako and Jimmy Uso, pretty much the same thing. Uh, and Paul Heyman was definitely looking a lot more grayer in the hair. All the stress without Roman Reigns being around is making him uh, produce more grays in his hair. That's that. Uh, at least he still has hair. And you find out that realize after a while that the ponytail wasn't working for him. Anyway, uh, Cena got in some good offense, but of course, as you'd expect, the loose Jay. And, you know, Jimmy. Why do I keep on wanting to call him the wrong one? I don't know. Anyway, uh, Jimmy and Solo took advantage of Cena being too far from Knight. But, as it seemed to, as it seemed that uh, Cena would tag in, the power would go out here. So, I had to watch the rest of the show on a phone. Which, I'm not really complaining, I'm just saying at least I was able to finish it, because power outage, and thankfully mom had Peacock on her phone, so. Uh, didn't really see the reaction that Knight got after being tagged in until we watched the highlights, so kind of missed that on that, as it was happening. And, uh, Knight was able to get the victory for him and Cena. So I'm sure that's going to lead to a very unhappy Roman Reigns by the time SmackDown comes around this week. And honestly, when has Roman been happy for the longest time as of late, huh? Anyway, uh... Then it was the main event, Seth Rollins against Shinsuke Nakamura in a last man standing match. And let me tell you, this match was absolutely nuts. Tables got involved, kendo sticks, even a ladder at one point. Trash cans got used, chairs, of course, steps, the announce table, as one would expect, got utilized. Went rolling into the crowd for a while. Pretty much that's where the match ended, I think. Um, 
pretty much the only place it didn't go was backstage. And they didn't have any battle on the right either. But yeah, um, so many times he thought Shinsuke had the match won, but Rollins' determination and stubborn will uh, kept in the fight. And the aforementioned uh, announce table spot was pretty bonkers because Rollins was up on one side of the ladder and Nakamura went up the other side and Rollins tried to hit Shinsuke with a superplex but Nakamura was able to fight out of that hit Seth with his version of the mist and Seth went tumbling through the table uh, and there was another table that got broken not an announced table version and Seth was, and Rollins was still able to get up from that And Nakamura hit him with a sidewalk slam onto a chair like he did leading up to the match. So pretty much everything that Nakamura hit Rollins with, Rollins had an answer for. And the match finally came to an end as they were battling through the crowd. Rollins hit, of all moves, a Falcon Arrow from one of the higher uh, sections of the crowd through like one of the uh, electric uh, crew set up tables and Rollins was able to get up to his feet first Nakamura was barely up to his feet but the referee made the count anyway and uh, Seth Rollins is still the World Heavyweight Champion and to the surprise of many, I'm sure, Damien Priest, who had who had been seen in our segment previously, was saying he wanted to cash in, but Finn Balor and Dominic Mysterio was pretty much telling him no, not to do it, and he kept saying, "Oh, I'm gonna do it," but as soon as Rhea Ripley said something, he was like, "Okay, fine, I'm not gonna do it." Definitely trying to make Rhea the. Uh, dominant leader of the group, even though they say, oh, there's no leader. We all know that's bogus. Uh, and there was a moment um, in between, I can't remember which matches it was, but where Booker T and Wade Barrett were talking backstage and Xavier Woods came up saying like, hey, can I enjoy the rest of the show with you guys? I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? And uh, Xavier ordered some Pizza Hut, which I'm sure a lot of people were well, like, man, I want some Pizza Hut right now. <laughs> and let me tell you, the Pizza Hut stuff that they showed off earlier definitely made one to reach into the screen and get some myself. But they haven't really uh, discovered that kind of technology yet. It's pretty much the only time they can go into a screen that I've seen that isn't from a horror movie is Blue's Clues. And they haven't figured out how to do this could do yet. I'm sure there's probably the game like at some point one way that people can do that, but no such way has been found. Anyway, uh and Jade Cargill had her first televised appearance on WWE, appearing backstage talking with Triple H. And, uh, yeah. I'm sure there's probably some other stuff I missed to, missed out on and didn't think to mention here, but that's what I remember happening and what I had written down. So, yeah. Very bummed that the power went out, but at least, like I said, I was able to watch the rest of it on a phone. So, didn't miss out on everything. 
but I'm sure there's still some stuff I missed out on. But anyway, uh, I think that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, until the next video, which I do believe is going to be me talking about my opinions on everything going on with James Gunn and the DCU. And sprinkle in some of my opinions on Marvel as well. Uh, so until then, see you next time. Bye.